No two fae are the same. This is an absolute truth that many changelings come to realize once their durance has begun in earnest. Their keeper might be a sentient cloud of smoke, or a ballroom princess with blood-stained high heels and a wig alive with rats and pigeons. They may have taken the poor human as a concubine or as a slave, a gardener or a soldier. Their task might be understandably important, like protecting a valuable relic or looking after the sentient hedge animals of the garden. Or it could be seemingly irrelevant, like counting piles of buttons and lint, only to have the numbers wiped from their minds and the counting beginning anew. Reason and logic play minor roles in how the true fae govern their domain, their words law, and their wishes reality. So can one truly classify them? There is no clear society in place, no continuous cooperation, and they seem utterly incapable of reproducing. They have no interest in their own origins and deflect any such inquiries, perhaps even punishing the changeling who asked. Some freeholds believe that they are gods, old gods, and like how Prometheus stole the fire, we plucked from them the spark of creativity, and they in turn punish us for it. Others see them as angels or devils, or perhaps something in between, servants of a greater power left behind, purposeless and alien. The true fae are sterile in more ways than just physical, their minds often incapable, or at the very least severally limited, in their creativity and expression. They make no music, they do not paint, nor do they understand the emotions of their prisoners. They poke and prod, testing their victims, plucking from them limb after limb, like a child with a crane fly, only to turn wholly around and cuddle them to their chest, whispering sweet nothings in the ears of the traumatized changeling. It is as if they push us to the very limit to elicit a response, like a toddler beating a beloved toy against the floor simply to see if it can withstand it, and what will happen if it won't. Some speculate that they want us because of what they lack, that they consume the spark that make us human in order to sustain themselves. The fact that changelings who spend too long in Arcadia grow more and more like their keepers could explain that, their humanity is slowly drained from them by their very surroundings. What other reason might there be? We are certainly not a challenge for them, nor are we strictly speaking necessary. Hobgoblins can do many of the things that changelings are set to do, and surely then their interest in us must serve some higher purpose, because they brave our reality, a world which causes them actual harm in order to retrieve us. But are they evil? If a creature is unable to understand that they are inflicting harm and pain through their actions, or that there even is something like pain to begin with, are those actions then, by their nature, morally reprehensive? Some changelings debate this to no end, but many consider it irrelevant. Regardless of the intention or their solipsistic mindset, the true fae are cruel and capricious. They have no capability to relate to anyone but themselves, nor do they care to try. Theirs is a dual nature of wishing to understand humanity, while simultaneously considering us so far beneath them we may as well be ants. Thankfully, they are also unable to reproduce with us humans, at least in any meaningful way. There are rumors of unfortunate changelings who have given birth to hobgoblin creatures, but these are so rare that they may hopefully be a myth. Some say that a pregnant woman who sleeps with one of the true fae may give birth to a child touched by fae, one that often ends up becoming twisted and spiritually wrong. And men who lie with succubus-like true fae may accidentally help father a twisted creature in others through the fluids they provide. Keepers manifest in many ways, each one a title the fae dresses in like a coat or a jacket. Not every title is a keeper, however, and many are the changelings who have escaped once their masters have donned another title, forgetting briefly who they were keeping prisoners. A title is not simply a name, it is an identity, a concept given form, and the more titles a member of the gentry holds, the more powerful they are. Titles can be stolen between Fae too, something they often go to war with each other over, and a true Fae who lacks any titles is a creature cornered and terrified, for they are but a name, and should that name be destroyed, they are gone forever. Since it is usually the titles who have made the contracts they wield as weapons, the true fae without them are also often weak and debilitated. Much like the changelings, our cousins from beyond the hedge can wear a mask when they enter our world. Most of the time, at a casual glance, this mask is sufficient to hide them, but stare at them too long and you will spot the signs. 
misshapen eyes, rotted teeth in an otherwise beautiful face, multi-jointed fingers seemingly alive on their own accord. As mentioned before, a true fae only enters our world when they truly want something, as exposure to our realm causes them literal damage. It is said that if a true fae is killed, and I use the word loosely here, in our world, they become a sleeper, the mask taking over and the gentry forgetting they were ever not of our world. At least not until they wake up again. Who knows if that strange old lady living down the street, the one who collects all those balls of yarn, isn't an ancient being who may have lost her memory during a sojourn into our realm. Some say the gentry have ways to peer into our world, to find their escaped servants no matter where they hide. Drop a knife on the floor and the sound will bring them to you. Break a mirror and they will spot you through the cracks. Kill a raven or a crow and they will wonder who murdered their favored pet. The rumors are many and few changelings are bold enough to test them, always living in constant fear that their keepers will come for them again. Many are the refugees who sleep with a horseshoe over their door or tossing salt over their shoulder if they should spill it. After all, why risk bringing attention to yourself? It may be folklore, but then so are the fair folk. Sometimes the gentry have other business in our world. Perhaps they seek to observe humans or the lost in their natural habitat, sifting through the confusing mess that is our lives and trying to find reason. Such a creature is doubly dangerous because if he is willing to spend time in a place that should by all means hurt him, then he must either be truly powerful or truly dedicated, and neither is good for the lost in that area. Others may seek to establish a foothold, perhaps convinced that if they can gain just enough sway in our world, it will no longer reject them. Some changelings may be persuaded to switch sides with honeyed words and promises, and an entire freehold may be at risk should this come to happen. Thus, another layer of paranoia is added to these poor souls' already tattered minds. Although it has been said time and time again that Arcadia is a realm of chaos, of rapidly changing strangeness, there is an order of sort to be had. Just as how a title binds the weird powers of a name, granting it form and purpose, so too does it define its realm, its modus operandi. Take for example Grandmother Grandmother, a true fae who takes the shape of a kindly looking old woman in a cozy cabin. She is known to have many children living with her, changelings all who are plucked from their lives to fill a niche in her narrative. Grandmother Grandmother doesn't change, nor do the circumstances around the durance she forces upon her victims. Only the actors themselves and some minor details about their roles may differ over time. And when an actor has outgrown their role, she will simply have to find another to take its place. Of course, some gentry may be more difficult to understand than others, but as time goes by, most changeling learn to read their keeper's mood and pattern of behavior, even if that pattern is nothing more than sudden and unexpected punishment. But ultimately, any attempt to truly understand the kindly folk is a fool's errand. They are spirits of the weird, ancient and unknowable even to themselves. Whatever information has been glimpsed may turn out to be worthless next time one of the gentry makes an appearance, their entire being an antithesis to this seemingly immutable fact. Often true fey who decide to retrieve their lost changeling may send a huntsman in their place. They are creatures older even than the gentry, the original inhabitants of Arcadia. And by taking out their hearts and filling the void with one of their titles, the fair folk may send these huntsmen after their lost charges, and a huntsman will be filled with the same. Sweet, sweet children, where are you? Where are you hiding? Are you playing in the game? Come out now, mother is growing impatient. There is a roast in the oven. There are chores to be done. Father will soon be home. And you would not want to disappoint father, hmm? Where are you hiding, my little sweetmeats? Mother does not like this game. She knows it will not end well. And... Mother knows best.